comes out that there is a fundraiser plan for her four days before the election. You may recall that that election in 2006 began in December. They took a break for a week or 10 days over the holidays and then had the election in late January. This, this, this particular fundraiser, Margot Timmons, the singer was scheduled to sing, or did sing, and it was sponsored by people like Doug Thrift, who at the time had the Motion Picture Association, Grant Anderson, who had and still has the Canadian Recording Industry Association, along with the heads of the Publishers Council and the Entertainment Software Alliance. Now, this fundraiser is scheduled to take place four days before the election. I think there were a lot of people out there that took a look at that and said, at a minimum, the optics on this are just really, really bad. Uh, and at the time, people started doing things. So I blogged about it. There was a lot of posts. It was titled, That's What Friends Are For. And said, well, they have some really good friends. Uh, and the press started picking up on the story as well. It was covered in a whole series of different mainstream and online presses. Uh, McLean's covers it as, uh, as Volte versus the bloggers. Uh, and Volte exacerbates the problem a little bit uh, when the first town hall meeting, in a room, I guess, something like this, uh, with all the various candidates, is asked to respond to this issue. And while this issue is percolating, I came up with something called the Copyright Club. I said that anybody who takes money from copyright lobbyists like the recording industry or the motion picture industry should make a pledge that they won't serve as the Minister of Canadian Heritage or the Parliamentary Secretary to Canadian Heritage, which Volte at the time was. And so Volte is asked this question at the town hall. She prepared her all asked, are they prepared to take the copyright pledge? And Sam Volte's response was something along the lines of she's proud of all the stuff that she does, and she's not going to allow Michael Dice and the Electronic Frontier Foundation and the pro-user zealots uh, to try to intimidate her and silence her. Well, I can't intimidate her, I can't just try to Nevertheless, um, that was Old Case's response. But what made this different uh, was that there was somebody there with, with a camcorder in the room, and this sounds pretty standard today, but in early 2006, it was still kind of kind of unique. Someone there with a the camcorder catches the video of this and uploads it to a site that was just out of and suddenly now, a site that many people even on YouTube still hadn't heard in this video gets embedded on various laws, gets promoted all over the place, and you even find people develop, putting out bumper stickers saying, I too am pro user zealot, um, as a response to what happened with Full Tank. And then over the course of this election campaign, the issue continues to rear its head throughout Parkdale High Park, and wouldn't you know, uh, as part of the election campaign, she loses running against Peggy Nash and the PMP. She loses it was actually the biggest swing of any riot in the GTA in Toronto. Uh, and while there may be any number of reasons for this for the flip, and the view of many, one of the reasons certainly was her position on cost. And I think that was probably the first time people began to take notice that this copy fight was beginning to emerge in Canada and that some of the kinds of tools, things like using YouTube and the like, and even third party sites that are bumper stickers or mashup kind of artists, there was all sorts of Sam Multi works for you was her slogan that she put all, all through the riot. And people, of course, made all kinds of mashups. Sam Multi works for the Canadian Recording Industry Association, Sam Multi works for Hollywood. It was that kind of stuff. But also, today's standard here at the time, somewhat unique. Now, throughout the rest of 2006, we don't get a copyright bill, but what we do get is, is one of the other really noteworthy things is this issue that's developed in Canada. And that is a whole series of groups begin to emerge. The kind of groups that before the advent of the internet, we probably wouldn't have seen be able to come coalesce and come together. Groups like the Canadian Music Creators Coalition, well known the artists such as uh, Avril Lavigne and Sarah McLaughlin, and very of the ladies become part of that. That really can provide a voice to the artists to say that the market and the industry assumes fans, they don't do so in our name. There were similar groups launched around issues like privacy, uh, as well as appropriation art, who started by a couple of BC artists artists that bring together artists and museum creators and a whole series of other uh, creative people from across the country who say that we also have a perspective and we want to ensure that our artists are heard. There's even companies that, that form new kinds of coalitions, like the Digital Security Coalition, which creates its own coalition around the issue of the kind of research that it conducts to be able to do business and fears that it would be stopped by this kind of legislation. Now, there are, of course, lots and lots of groups that form as part of copyright. The ability for people to find one another online and then to get to use this forum as a way to ensure that their voice is heard was something both new and something very, very important. Things get, I think, really interesting in the last two days of 2007. Surveys are still, still running the government. In the fall of 2007, in a speech from the 
from, they make it very clear that they're about to introduce copyright reform. It's one of their priorities for the fall. And at the time, the, the minister responsible was Jim Prentice in Calgary. And so sure enough, that takes place, I believe it was in the first week of October. Uh, sure enough, the first week of December, on the order paper, the signals on the new legislation is forthcoming, uh, there's an indication that a copyright bill is on the way. This was actually was put on the order paper, I believe it was on December the 7th, which was a Friday, uh, scheduled with the, the proper notice to be introduced the following Tuesday. And as I'm fond of saying, a funny thing happened on the way to have that bill being introduced. Uh, it wasn't. And as I'm sure many people here know, one of the reasons that it wasn't was a Facebook group that I started just a week earlier called Fair Copyright of Canada, uh, which is still around a lot. I established it uh, on the front. It was Saturday night. It was after the leaps on the weekend. We just lost it again. We lost it again. It overtime. <laughs> Sure enough, a whole lot of people did. In fact, 